you're going to hear some heavy breathing. That's the dogs. First thing I do is I make myself a loop about 16 inches in diameter. You can also go over to the tank or the, the cage itself in case your cages are not exactly even and you can space it out inside like that. I've measured off the distance that I need to make my loop. I'm using a pair of wire strippers. You can cut these with scissors, but it's hard. With these, it's really easy, and you're done, just like that. The first thing that I want to do is I want to put this together using a T-connector. This T-connector, this T-connector is going to be where the incoming line is going to feed into this loop. So, if you take this and you shove it in there and it takes some force, it's hard. I'll show you an easy way to do that. To make it easier to thread the tubing onto the T section and or the flag sections as I get to that, I heat some water up to boiling. Usually I use a little propane torch, but as you can hear the wind is really up and keeping that torch going would be very difficult. So I put some water on here and I heat it up to boiling. Due to the wind, I put a large can over the top of it just to act as an additional insulator to help heat that water up faster. I'm also going to go ahead and assemble it here and show you how I do it. Just because I have so many pieces, um, <clears throat> that water is going to cool off and I'm not using my propane torch as I explained earlier. All right, what we have, this is going to be our line in, and these are going to be our line out. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing flag emitters on there. The reason that I like flag, these are from last year. You notice they're really dirty. This is from this year, and it's really clean. Now let me show you why I like the flag emitters. The flag emitters have a little flag on them, and you can turn them like so, and then you can pull them apart. It takes a little effort, but you can get them apart. Okay, now these are one gallon per hour emitters or drip, <laughs> drip emitters, one gallon per hour. But you can clean these out if they clog. You can't do that with other stuff. There is a brown tape which is used for drip irrigation from a lot of companies and you need to have a filter to make sure that you don't get dirt in those those tapes, those pipes, because if you do those things are dead for, for life. Now let me show you uh, some screens and explain the importance of that. The importance of having clean water going through your drip system cannot be overemphasized because these emitters easily jam. Again, the uh, kind of a round hose that have the emitters built into them, if they jam up, you're just out of luck. This right here, which I'm about to show you, has three quarter inch uh, male and female. It has a flow direction showing which way it goes. Sometimes I'll take and actually use a paint stick, a bright yellow or white to indicate color on both sides so I can't accidentally put this on backwards. 
and before you think you can't do that, guess again. Now, it comes with a number 40 mesh and a 100 mesh. Let's talk about meshes real quick. Oh, as we get to the meshes, it has these pre-filters, which would go in the ends of these things to uh, keep dirt from getting in there. You also have an extra O-ring to the inside of this so it doesn't leak. Here's your, here's your O-ring right inside here. It's probably not going to show up on camera because of the contrast. This is a number 100 screen. You can still see my finger through it, but not real clear. How about a uh, mechanical pencil? You can see the mechanical pencil in there, but it's a bit diffused. This is the number 40 screen. Here you can clearly see the pen or the pencil. It's larger size. Now, I'm going to throw this out just in case you're interested. If you ever have a well screen built and you want no sand coming into your casing, you need a well screen with number 200 wire on it. This piece fits into the bottom. These are soft rubber right here. So it sits in, it seats firmly. This has an in direction coming in this way and it has an out direction. And sediment gets caught inside the screened area. Now these, this one turns, this one is fixed. But as I say, I cannot overemphasize the importance of having a screen on your mitters. That's the other reason why I like flag mitters is because if they jam, I can take this off and I can clean them. Now let's talk about cleaning this hose out. If, if for some reason we suspected contamination, let me show you how I would do that. If I were to suspect that this thing had contamination in it, I would not have pre-assembled it. But let's say that we have assembled it, we've been running it, and we're worried about have con having contamination in it. This is a 35cc syringe. A 30 would work. I went and got this at a, a feed store, and they just happened to have this. I grabbed it. On the end up here, you have a lure lock, which is fine, but you can put tubing for a fish aquarium, which is at this time still very inexpensive. I'm not going to say it's not going to get expensive, but you could fill this with soapy water. You could push the, push your fish tubing here, fish air tubing, and just push it onto here good, and then squeeze this through and look and see if you're getting these things coming out. If you have a question as to whether or not they're the, fl the flag would be attached on here, right? So you take the flag off and then you push fluid through. If you want to make sure it's working everywhere, you can leave the flag on all the way around except for one and push your fluid through because this is going to act as a resistance to the flow of fluid and it will flush the contaminants out of each one of these cells as you go around and you just take this and shake it off in some water and then you can put it back together and then go all the way around and clear any jams that you have inside your tubing. At least that's what I've done in the past when one of my screens didn't properly work. But that's another story. All right, we know that we have a total. This is the incoming right here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So we need five flags. We got these four and a fifth one. What we'll do is we'll PMCS all of these. I'll take them apart. I'll put them in some water. The ones that have been used, there's four of those. I'll take them completely apart. 
I'll put them in some water. I'll shake the living daylights out of them. And then I'll wipe them off. I'll give a visual examination to make sure they're clean. And then we'll go to the next step of actually hooking these on to what we're doing. I'll take each flag apart. They're a bit difficult to get apart. You also got to make sure that you're not on a ledge. And I was on a ledge. Let me grab a pair of pliers. This is why you check them because the fact that this is not coming apart that easy tells me it's probably got dirt in it. It doesn't. It's very clean, but we're still going to wash it up. There we go. This one is brand new out of the package. We're going to leave it alone. Put a lid on. You can do a whole lot at a time. I'm only just doing five of them. I'm going to go rinse these off and we'll come right back. Here are my mitters looking just as good as the brand new one. Now I'll put them back together and putting them back together I've showed you that previously so I'm going to do this off camera and then I'm going to show you how I actually attach these things. Since these flags are going to be on a short stem I'm going to hook the mitters onto the flags. In fact, we're going to turn the flags this way so I can push them on a little further. We're going to push the mitters onto the flag. Uh, we're going to push the mitters onto the hose. What I do is I get water that's very close to boiling, probably 160 to 180 degrees. I put my tube in about an inch and I put it in there from 10 to 15 seconds, sometimes a little bit longer. Larger, thicker tubing might have to be in close to a minute to soften it, to push on. But I put it on there. If I have any kind of resistance to pushing this on fairly easy, I pull it off and I put it in there for more. And I count my seconds. One, two, three, so forth. And then shove that together. So it's kind of a trial and error. Once you've got your water at temperature, you'll know how long you have to do this. So I'll push this on. Then and only then, I'll come back and I'll cut it at about one inch. When I get ready to hook the flag to my tubing, I will hang on to the flag physically like this. I'll dump the tubing into the water for however long, however many seconds I need. Then I'll take hold of this and I'll work the tubing onto this. So, I've explained that. I'm going to go ahead and hook these all up, and then I'll, I'll show you the finished product. For me to push these on, I had to hold them into the water for about 10 seconds, so the water is probably a lot closer to 180 degrees. The next step, I'm going to walk this over to the um, heating area that I'm using. You could do this in the house and you could use your stove but now the next thing is to put these on and I guess I can film one of them for you. Again if you're joining this presentation a bit late in the broadcast I have a can in here full of hot water and this on top is just to help keep the heat inside the can because it's so windy out here. To recap I'm going to grab the flag like so and the next thing I'm going to do is stick this down into the water for about 12 seconds and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to slide it over the thing. there we go. It doesn't matter what angle it's at, the water is going to be coming out at 20 psi and it will push, it will, it will come out of this. So if it's pointing up, if it's pointing down, it doesn't really matter where it's at. I'll do the next ones and I'm going to do that off camera.
Warning, when using hot liquids for heating plastic, you risk injury from burns and scalds. Do not use boiling water, but use very, very hot, like about 180 degrees, and be very careful. Make sure that you don't use anything that spills easily, and use extreme caution. Here is the finished product. My line in will be going here, and I'll be doing the same thing by heating some hose and pushing it on and running it the length. And these will just be laying on top of the um, potato tower. These will be on top of the potato tower with some compost or thatch or something on top just to help keep the top from drying out. Now, how long do we need to run this thing? That is going to have to be done by observation. So this may have to have its own timer set up so that the water is on for, say, a certain number of plants, but this one has a reservoir which will fill up and will continue to drip down into the thing and if I do that I'll show you how I do it because I'll be using a one gallon jar which this will run for an hour that other one will fill up with a mitter which should fill it up in an hour and then when this turns off you'll be getting an additional one gallon right through the center of the core of the thing. I will draw out what I'm talking about with it with the center piece so that you understand what I'm talking about the physics of it is very elementary, but this way you'll understand what's going on. This end right here is where the water comes from, so it's going to be facing this way because my water distribution system is off to your right. This will be laying up here about this level. If you notice, my mitters are inside the straw, so most of it's going to be going down through the core because we want our potatoes to be growing inside there. In the off event that I need to add water to this, I'll be setting my one gallon jug right here. I'll show you how that's done in a, in a separate video. I would like to hear your comments on this design, so please leave a couple of comments and tell me what you think. Dysfunctional Vet, out.